Well, hello again, Vinyl Community. I'm going to jump on a thread that was started by Rob Walker, and his thread is show records that have illustrated covers as opposed to photography. So I'm going to start with uh, the first of my ten choices, Jazz Guitar Bach on the Nonsuch label. And this is from 1965, so it predates the iconic switched on Bach cover with uh, Bach photographed next to the Moog synthesizer. Uh, here we have Bach with an electric guitar and amplifier. And the artwork is by Edward Sorel, who's very well known for his uh, artwork appearing in many, many magazines from the New Yorker to the National Lampoon, Vanity Fair, Time and Newsweek, and so on. Number two. Artwork by Don Wilson for this album by the Ramsey Lewis Trio, Upendo Ni Pamoja. And uh, I just really like the uh, little animal friends joining the trio members in this. Nice stylization, nice subtle use of color. Just a, a favorite cover of mine. Another very favorite, one of my all-time favorites, uh, John Abercrombie and Gateway with uh, his trio with Dave Holland on bass and Jack DeJunette on drums. Incredible record, incredible players, and beautiful, beautiful artwork by Maya Weber, uh, the wife of Eberhard Weber, who of course has many LPs on the ECM label, uh, as this one is, of his own, um, with artwork by Maya, although uh, he doesn't play on this record. Abracadabra by Evan Parker and Greg Goodman. Uh, free jazz for tenor sax and unprepared piano as it's billed. And the artwork is from the book The City Curious by the Belgian artist Jean de Bolcher. This is from uh, 1920, that, the artwork that is, not the record. Uh, the artwork is from the 1920 book and uh, the record is on the Beak Doctor label, which also has cool artwork for its label logo. So there is uh, Abracadabra. A more familiar album, Procol Harum's third album, A Salty Dog. And the cover is a parody of the Player's Navy Cut cigarette package, which would have been familiar to the British at the time, not so much to us Yanks. And the artwork is by Procol's lyricist Keith Reed's wife, who is identified only by the name Dickinson. And that's, a, that's an image that's been um, parodied a number of times, including one, I don't have a copy to show you, but Eric Idle wrote a book called Hello Sailor that uh, used that image for uh, parodic purposes. Soft Machine Bundles from 1975. Um, their first album, well, their only album with Alan Holdsworth in the band. And their first album really to feature a lead guitarist since they hadn't made a proper album when their founding guitarist David Allen was in the band and then they just went without any real lead guitar for uh, their first seven proper albums. The artwork here is by Reg Cartwright and was later incorporated into a book, Mr. Potter's Pigeon, which was published in um, 1980 to great acclaim, I understand. So there's presumably Mr. Potter with his pigeon. Rather different, rather more disturbing image from uh, Helmut Venska is the artist, German artist, who uh, did some covers for the band Nectar, but this cover for Zion, uh, for Electric Silence, is much more eerie than those, much more 
apocalyptic and uh, science fictional. There's something really, uh, really unpleasant going on with these creatures and uh, really amazing vivid use of color in there. It's um, just for the photography, nice use of color on the back. They get that uh, infrared effect. This is a reissue copy. I used to have an original on the Bacillus label, and one of the dumbest things I ever did in my life was to sell that, because now those originals go for hundreds of dollars, or at least the sellers ask hundreds of dollars. I don't know how many of them actually change hands at those prices, but uh, <laughs> it's a lot. You know, I thought I could get through this easily without any edits, but the crappy off-brand battery in my camera died on me after, like, five minutes or whatever it's been. So I, I alternate batteries between the original uh, Canon battery in this camera and, let me get it on the screen, Wasabi Power. Ooh, sounds pretty spicy, doesn't it? This lasts like <laughs> long enough to, to get the other battery charged if you're lucky. Actually, it doesn't. It doesn't even last that long. Anyway, back to Germany. Klaus Schulze and Black Dance with artwork by Urs Amann, Swiss artist, very much influenced by Salvador Dali. And the interior as well. Really fitting artwork, I think, for these Klaus Schulze albums. Uh, the follow-up Time Wind also had Urs Amon's artwork and um, worked very well. Gary Panter did a lot of artwork for Ralph Records. Um, he's also known for doing the artwork for the contractual obligation albums that were released from Frank Zappa through Warner Brothers after Zappa uh, had a big contract dispute with Warner Brothers and left the label. Um, and those albums are often described as unauthorized. <laughs> and, and Gary Panter gets a really bad rap on those because uh, you know, Zappa goes around saying, oh, those albums were just... Uh, bunged out with uh, ugly covers and I didn't approve the cover art. Well, actually Gary Panter's artwork is not all that far removed in his aesthetic from Cal Schenkel's artwork. And I think that Gary Panter um, acknowledges Cal Schenkel as an influence. And Cal Schenkel, of course, was Zappa's own right-hand man in artistic uh, packaging deals in the uh, early days. This is a compilation on Ralph Records of four artists on the label, Chrome, uh, Tuxedo Moon, The Residents, and MX-80 Sound. And it's all, um, at the time, otherwise unreleased material by those artists. Pete Sinfield and his only solo album, Still, with cover art by uh, Sulamit Wolfing, uh, the German artist, and the title of the painting used for this album is The Big Friend. Love this cover. Um, this is uh, an album with a lot of King Crimson DNA in it. A lot of the uh, former and future members of King Crimson join Pete Sinfield, who of course was King Crimson's original lyricist. Uh, his voice is very soft. He's not really uh, a strong singer, but he knows how to deliver his own songs. So there he is peeping through the, the greenery or something. The Big Friend. So those are my ten. Of course, I'm going to get in here with uh, one of my own albums because I've been privileged to work with some really wonderful artists in uh, helping out with the packaging in uh, these albums. Uh, this is 
my album Paleozoic from uh, 2017, and the cover artist is Mike Manasco. I'd um, had the idea that I wanted something of the uh, the Cambrian era of life, the the earliest multicellular life on Earth, and I wanted something that was kind of in the vein of the natural history books that I had as a child, the dinosaur books or the ocean books that showed the, the very primitive life on Earth. And Mike Manasco just came through with this amazing image. Um, this is done in pencil. It's colored pencil. Real trilobite on the back. That's a photo. And um, so very proud to have this artwork on one of my albums. Uh, as I say, I've had uh, I've had some some great people to work with. Uh, William Renfro for the Hip Crime Vocab, and uh, Monica J for the Hurdle Turtled Out of Heaven, and uh, Rob Berger for Rats Alley. So cheers to all of them. Thanks very much for watching. Be well. I'll uh, leave a link below for Rob Walker's. Uh, thread starting video, and talk with you again soon. Bye-bye for now.